Let us pitch our tents here. I beseech you, in the name of God, let us go free. You should have thought of that before, my lad. You gambled and lost. Now, you and your woman will be sold at the market to pay your debt. But that is forbidden by the law. Eh, hey, it might be forbidden by your law, uh, but not by ours. We are not Jews. Get her down and treat her well. She's worth a shekel or two. We've got to recover our losses with this devil. <gasps> and as for you, earn your bread. Go and look after the sheep. Why don't you send someone to ask my father to pay a ransom? In Damascus, we are sure to find someone willing to pay us much more.
Lolita. Shh. I'm gonna run for it to Capernaum and tell your father. I don't think that'll do any good. Shouting at Zilmira? Oh, I was driving a crow away. Now what's the matter? That's enough! Yes, it's me. You recognize me then. Where is my son? Nabu! Where have you taken him? Where he took me, and now he needs your help. First you flee, and then you come here asking for help. What has happened? He has lost all his money. Huh, the money he stole from his father. How did he lose it? Playing dice. Now they want to sell him as a slave at the market in Damascus. <laughs> a slave? How can that be? They are marauders from Syria, not Israelites. But I managed to escape. How much does he owe? A hundred denarii. Oh, can you believe it? His father will never pay it back. Well, let's go and see his father. He's my son as well. Have you seen my husband, Joel? Well, have you or haven't you? He passed by earlier, but he didn't drink anything, I swear. Where did he go? He said he was going to the lake. Oh, no! Look what they've made me do! Yes, it's been a good day. Joel! Joel! What do you want from me, woman? I have news of your son. I no longer have a son. They intend to sell them at the Damascus slave market. Don't they want to sell you as well? Why are you here and he isn't? Because we managed to escape. We must pay the ransom. Otherwise, we will sell him. He took this girl with him, right? He stole my money and even took one of my donkeys. Or am I mistaken? She brought the donkey back. <laughs> they have put him in chains, taken everything off him. They're not feeding him. <laughs> Listen, girl, you went away taking what was not yours. What do I care about him? He went around squandering my money gambling. You old fool! That boy needs you! I'm not going to give him another penny. My heart's not as tender as yours. And that's final! <laughs> Joel. Joel. Jesus, did you hear what he said? This man is blind, but he doesn't realize it. Excuse her, Master. My wife is ignorant. Nothing's wrong. No, Joel. It's not true that nothing's wrong. You've got a hearing problem. 
Master, I don't understand why I should have to pay out money for a son who has stolen from me. I want to tell you a story, Joel. Maybe then you'll understand. All right, Master. I'm listening. There was a man who had two sons. Both of them helped their father in the fields, working together in peace. But one day... What's the matter? I've had enough of this life. What are you doing here? Father, I want to change my life. See the world. Is there anything you're lacking? Are you not happy? Yes, but I want to be even happier. I want to be free. What's the matter? Aren't you free here? Father... None of this is mine. The land is not mine. The vines are not mine. Give me what is my due and let me make my own way. The father couldn't understand why his son wished to leave the comfort of his home. But he divided his wealth between his two sons and the younger son left for a faraway country. The young man began to lead an undisciplined life. Soon, he had squandered all the money that his father had given him. can do any better. Curse it! Get on with it! We haven't got all day! Got to pay up, boy. Why don't you run back to your father? <laughs> <laughs> As if that was not enough, a great famine struck the land. The harvest failed. There was no water. The animals were dying. The poor young man was in terrible need, but he was too proud to return to his father. Give me something. If you don't go away, I'll take a stick to you. Can I help you to sell your pots? Get out of here. There's not enough work for me. Never mind you. What do you want? 
I have nothing to eat. Go and clean out my pigsty. What are you doing, you thief? Oh. Try that again. My father's servants have bread to spare. But here I perish with hunger. I shall return home. He took the same road back to his father's house, but as a poor man, not a rich one. The famine had not arrived in his country. Father, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your servants. Quickly, wash him. Bring the best robe and put it on him. Quickly, quickly, slaughter the fatted calf. Let us eat and make merry, because this my son was dead and is alive again. Let us eat and make merry, because this son of mine was lost and is now found. Where's that music coming from? What's going on? Come in, come in. Your brother has returned. We must rejoice. These many years I've served you, I've never disobeyed you. Isn't that so? Of course. Yet you never gave me a feast to make merry with my friends. But when this son of yours, who squandered his inheritance, comes home, you kill the fatted calf for him. So, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. Yet, it is fitting to make merry, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. If you want to be righteous, it's not enough not to do evil. You have to do good. Do you understand, Joel? Do you still say you have no son? Yes, now I understand. Step right up. Step right up. Look at this strong young Jew. A bargain at a hundred denarii. He should be here somewhere. Hey, you over there. That's him. That's my donkey. And that's my slave. First of all, this is my donkey. And secondly, this girl is mine too. She is my son's wife. No, they're mine. Your son lost them playing dice. Your son is a little careless. I will pay off his debts. In that case, come over here. You are free, and you 
got your father to thank, for he is a righteous man. Let us return home. I have no fatted calf to kill, but we shall make merry in any case. If that bird keeps on following us, it'll end up in a pan. Jesus, a perfect master. He spoke to the crowds using not only the language of his times, Aramaic, but also images, comparisons, elements drawn from everyday life. He spoke of shepherds and sheep, of harvesting and vintage, oil lamps and bushels, drachmas, darnel and mustard seed. He did so in order to make himself better understood, to convince. Jesus often told short, exemplifying stories called parables, since this was the habit in those times for schools and synagogues to investigate the deepest meanings of the scriptures. The word parable comes from the Greek word parabole, in Hebrew, masal. In Greek, it means comparison, parallel, similitude. In Hebrew, masal also means wise saying, maxim. Jesus used the parables to open a dialogue with the humble, to fix the content of his teaching in the memory of those who were listening, to convince his audience effectively. The parable is not a text of free fantasy. It's a story in which every detail, from protagonists to events, expresses an edifying content specifically addressed to represent the teaching that Jesus wants to give, with great simplicity, but also with deep meaning and eloquence. The Gospels contain more than 70 parables, if we include comparisons and metaphors. From a narrative point of view, 30 are remarkable. Here are a few of them. The Prodigal Son, in which Jesus teaches to celebrate and rejoice when a sinner comes back into his father's arms. The mustard seed, the good Samaritan, who according to Jesus' teaching, heals even his enemy's wounds. The rich man and Lazarus, in which Jesus teaches that those who do not want to listen to God's word will not do it even in the presence of great miracles. The yeast, the hidden pearl, where Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. Whoever finds it sells everything he owns and buys that field. The sower. The darnel, in which Jesus teaches that those who commit iniquity will be burnt in the fire like weeds, and they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The wicked tenants. The lost sheep, where Jesus says that there will be more rejoicing over one sinner repenting than over 99 upright people who have no need of repentance. The language of parables is typical of the literary tradition of the Bible and other ancient literatures. 